Welcome to the Music Cave. In this video, I'm going to show you my 1972 Mark VI that I'm getting ready to overhaul. I'm going to show you some of the things I'm going to do to it, some of the things I look for before I overhaul it, and in a few weeks, I will demonstrate it because it'll be done. So this is my Mark VI, built in 1972, and it's very beautiful. This saxophone's hardly been played. It does have a little bit of neck strap marks, a little bit of just normal wear and tear, but hardly any for being as old as it is. I guess it'd be 52 years old, if my math is correct. I'm getting ready to overhaul the saxophone. Most of the pads in the saxophone are original. It definitely needs pads. It's not playing very well at all. The key venting is super low. And if you look at the, the lower stack, especially, you can tell that those keys are barely open. So even even squeezing the keys to just try, try to see how it plays and how it sounds, it's not playing well at all. And I just kind of want to show you that. I want to show you, just kind of compare it to this Calworth that I have. And just kind of compare the key heights. You can see those, that these are a little bit higher and a little bit more open. And this one plays really well. Another one that belongs to the shop here that we will be looking at and playing with at some point. Back to the Mark VI. So when I get these in, I check a few things before I even get started on it and do anything. And some of the things I'll check for is just to see if the neck is straight and to see if it's been pulled down or has any damage dents. And if it's been pulled down, usually you can tell just by visually looking at it. And sometimes you can tell just by feeling the tube to see if it feels round and usually they'll bend right in here. And that's from somebody putting on a mouthpiece usually and, and pulling down on the neck and it just gets bent down. So this sax one has a really straight neck. Also, I like to check the neck fit. This neck feels pretty snug, although it doesn't really tighten down with the neck screw like I want it to. Like when I tighten down that neck screw, I want that neck to not really move at all at least not easily. So I suspect once this neck connection's cleaned, it'll be loose and I'll need to do a little bit of neck fitting, but I think it's it's pretty tight. Also, we'll, we'll do a leak check and make sure that's not leaking after everything is, is done. I've done my neck fitting. I also wanna look it over and look for any kind of dents and dings just to see what kind of dent removal I need to do. Sometimes the dent removal is easier done with the keys off because you can reach certain things, especially in the bow area. This saxophone does not have any dings except for a couple in the bell I've noticed. But overall, I don't really see any dings in it, which is really amazing. I'll also check the bell flare, make sure it's straight. I'll also check the bell alignment, although with old pads that could be deceiving if the pads have swelled or they weren't right to begin with. You don't want to start moving the bell until you've installed your new pads and make sure that the bell is is actually been moved. I also will check the bent body. Usually without do first thing I'll just look down the body tube and see if it's straight. At some point I'll put a light in the bell and then I can look down the tube and see if it's straight. But just initial looking I will just just look down the body tube. Just so I know what I'm dealing with. Also I'll check key play. This saxophone is extremely tight. The, there's hardly any key play in any of the keys, which is so cool. It just shows how much quality and craftsmanship went into the saxophone. Being 52 years old, it hasn't been played that much, but the keys are so tight. The upper stack does have a little bit of key movement, and it's mainly up and down, not so much side to side, although there is a little bit, but the upper stack is the only part that I'll really have to do anything with. Sometimes once you get it all cleaned up, you'll remove some old grease and you'll discover, hey, there actually is some key play. So that could happen with the sax when all the, the keys don't feel sluggish. So I, I don't think I'll really have to deal with much, if any, kind of extra key play removal, which is cool. It makes my job really easy and it just and it shows how much the sax one has been played, which is not much at all. As far as the adjustment materials and silencing materials, I'll use a mixture of tech cork, natural key cork, felt. Um, I, I have a really dense felt that doesn't really compress. I like to use those on some of the adjustment pieces. 
which helps keep it quiet and is long lasting so things won't move out of adjustment where if you use a natural sheet cork it will over time compress and you'll lose some of your adjustments and I've got some little tricks that I'll use to silence some things this does have the noisy ball joint key mechanisms which are really hard to silence I've, I'll put some probably end up putting some thick grease on it maybe some Teflon and see if I can get them to quiet down generally you start to get them to quiet and they can be sluggish so it's a really hard balance to get that quiet and working well but yeah this axe one is so beautiful I'm so excited to get this done and play it these are the pads I'm going to put in these are made by Pisoni and they're made in Italy and they're a beautiful pad they've been making these for decades and I hope you can tell that in the camera but they are really just really beautiful the leather's really soft I'll usually well I always put a thin coat of lacquer on them which is kind of an old timer trick and that helps seal the pad although these pads are are sealed from the factory but it does help seal them a little bit more and it keeps them makes them last a little longer and makes them easier to clean off I have these resonators that are really similar to the original and I will put plastic back in the saxophone and they're just just the basic plastic saxophone with these little Preston brass pieces that'll go in the back and press in and really simple and easy to use sometimes I use a, a melted back a heat stake and melt the back but these are really nice and that'll look really nice once they're in and it'll sound good I think that's everything pre-inspection that I like to do to them and luckily this one's really nice sometimes you get them in where they you know, have a neck pulled down or you have to do some soldering yeah, that's another thing I'll check is just to make sure everything is is soldered in one piece. Sometimes the guards are usually pretty easy to tell, but sometimes like these little F sharp guards, they'll be loose and you can't really tell because they're just they're still flush with the body, but you can lift up on them and they'll be loose. But this sax one is so nice and straight, but unfortunately the pads are most of them are 50 years old, and you can see like the G key pad. Hopefully, you can see some of those pads how waterlogged and gross they are but the pearls feel great which is always really nice when the pearls haven't been eaten up by finger acids there's a little bit of lacquer if you like on the side of sharp key that's probably from heat from somebody putting too much heat on the lacquer and burning the the pad I'm assuming that's probably what that is and there's a little bit on the low B flat key as well I've taken that low B flat pad out just to, I wanted to check sizing just to make sure I had the right size for everything. And I do. But yeah, very minimal wear and tear on the saxophone. Show you some of it close up. There aren't too many out there that are this nice. And I really like how these late Mark Sixes play. Once I'm done with it, we will do some comparisons. So I have a few other saxophones that, that are done and ready to be put on YouTube. A Calworth SX90. That's also very nice. This is a late. 90s I think but really beautiful and this is the 90 without the rolled tone hole so it's not the SX90R which I think is probably a good thing although I do dig the rolled tone holes but without the rolled tone holes the tone holes are very level which makes working on them a lot easier although I do have good luck with the rolled tone holes. I use the proper amount of glue and I can get those pads to level and make those horns sing as well. And I've done plenty of those with the rolled tone holes, especially if you count the cons that I've done. Also, let me show you one more saxophone. This Busher or Bisher 400 tenor saxophone is finally done. And it is beautiful and it plays so amazing. Just give you a quick sneak peek of that one. Hopefully, 
I have a f good friend who's a really good player coming over soon, and we're going to compare all three of these horns and his horns, so it'll be a cool tenor sax shootout. If you're liking this video, please like and subscribe. Also, I'd love to know what you think of these late model Mark Sixes if you played one. I've always thought they were great horns. I've always been so happy when I've been able to play one. I'm really excited for this one. Hopefully it turns out as good as I think it's going to. Just playing it as is. I'm really excited. Thanks for watching. My name is Scott Reed. I'm a woodwind repair technician. I buy, sell, trade, and collect. And I play musical instruments. And now I have a YouTube channel.